Welcome to Open Ped for Med Ed, Strategies for Marketing, Open Education, and Pedagogy to a Medical School. This presentation is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution License. Hello, my name is Courtney Eager, and I'm the Learning and Engagement Librarian at Temple University's Health Sciences Libraries, located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This lightning talk will briefly describe a project created for the SPARC Open Education Leadership Program 2021 to 2022 cohort. This project, Marketing Open Education and Pedagogy to a Medical School, was developed with a School of Medicine in mind, an underrepresented population in open education. With an emphasis on encouraging open pedagogy in medical education, this project serves as a resource for other health sciences librarians. Librarians can use these outreach and marketing materials in their own communication with health sciences faculty and students. These materials are general enough to be used or adapted by any academic librarian. So why did I focus on a medical school? First of all, that's my job. I work in a health sciences library and the medical school is one of our largest programs. As part of my work on our library's open education team, I also knew that the medical school does not submit applications to our textbook affordability project grant program. I set out to learn more. One of our assignments for the SPARC program is conducting interviews with stakeholders. So I met with administrators in the medical school, with faculty, and with a student. I made assumptions, which is something I learned I never should do. I assumed they would be interested in open textbooks, but it really did not seem to be an issue. The library purchases many of their textbooks, both in print and online, and, likely breaking copyright, many reported offering scanned readings or files of already shared literature. The biggest expense around course materials was when students self-selected to purchase online test prep study tools. I did learn that medical faculty and students were fuzzy on the differences in open scholarship and used phrases interchangeably like open access and open education. None of them knew about open licenses. I learned that faculty talked about projects and assignments where students are creating the content, leading me to think I should shift my focus to open pedagogy. Abby Elder defines open pedagogy as the set of pedagogical practices that include engaging students in content creation and making learning accessible. I realized it might be useful to work on outreach opportunities to educate medical students and faculty on open education and open pedagogy practices. I had asked some of my stakeholders about the importance of diversity, since open educational practices can help make classrooms more inclusive. One said to me, medical schools want to attract diverse students who will then see diverse patients in many different settings. They admitted that in attracting diverse students, there may be underrepresented populations who need more help with academics, especially financially. OER helps address this aspect, of course. Open pedagogy is another way to include diverse voices and perspectives in medical school, so I realized the faculty needed more understanding of how to incorporate open pedagogical practices into their courses. After meeting with my stakeholders, I knew that they were on Twitter. I decided to create a social media plan to raise awareness of open pedagogy and open education. I was inspired by Ned Potter's webinar on marketing online resources in the academic library. He believes that marketing is telling the right people at the right time in the right way about what we have that they need. So let's break that down. In telling the right people, for me and my situation, this means the School of Medicine, their faculty, the residents, fourth years, even hospital clinicians. At the right time. This was really all about me because Open Education Week in March seemed like a logical time to host a social media campaign. In the right way, I know for this group of people that short bursts of information that they can read or watch quickly would be best. And finally, about what we have that they need. We have the expertise to help others engage in open pedagogy and education. I drafted a week-long schedule of tweets containing the information that I thought was important in educating others. You'll be able to see all of these tweets in the resource that I share with you. 
I tried to create a catchphrase, open ped for med ed. I used images to draw attention. I tagged relevant accounts and I used popular hashtags. So what did my tweets cover? I planned out the content and covered in this order, an introduction, open ped and ed definitions, OER definitions, OER resources, a call for applications to our textbook affordability project, Creative Commons licenses, open pedagogy, and I finished with a call to action. Always remember to assess your outreach efforts. You can use built-in metrics for this. Here I tracked numbers that came from Twitter, like tweet impressions, engagements, link clicks, retweets, etc. Now there are other options you can use as outre outreach opportunities, but they aren't always thought of in this way, specifically infographics, workshops, and sample assignments. You can make infographics or flyers to share in print or electronically. If you print them, you can leave them at your library desk or even stuff them into faculty mailboxes. You can also take the online version and post it on social media or add it to your library website. I like to use the online tool Canva to design these infographics. The handout you see here was at instructor request, but I also found other venues where I could share it, such as the School of Medicine New Faculty Fair. Pros of infographics are that they are low interaction on the creator's part. You just make them and hand them out to the world. They can also be read at any time by anyone. The cons of these are that they do take some time to create. You may not be able to measure engagement either. Now, if your academic library is like mine, you already hold regular workshops. While workshops are often viewed as educational, they are also marketing tools. I created a workshop for my project called How to Become an Open Scholar. Pros of workshops are that you likely already have an audience for these. You may also already have something created that could be adapted for this message. You could also cut your prep time by using my materials. Cons are that you're never guaranteed a full audience in your workshop and that the materials can take some time to put together if you're starting from scratch. Faculty may be unsure where to start in regards to an open pedagogy assignment, so why not make it easier and create a sample assignment? Pros are that you now have a pitch to give to faculty or maybe a way to start a deeper conversation so that you can help them alter an existing assignment. Cons are that if you don't know the content of the course, it may be difficult to reimagine an assignment. I want you to use my materials. I'll share a link that will take you to a detailed document containing all of the resources I created for my Spark capstone project. You'll get tweets, infographics, a workshop, and a sample assignment that you can adapt for your own institution. Be sure you give attribution, and I encourage you to license your materials and share them as well. With each uh, marketing material, I also listed the intended audience, the context that the material was used in, and how to use the materials. So you just want to go to bit.ly slash open ped med ed for all of the details. Thank you for viewing my talk. I'm always willing to discuss open education, open pedagogy, marketing and outreach, and health sciences. So please reach out to me. You can find me on Twitter at libcourtneyeager, or you can drop me an email at courtney.eager at temple.edu. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the conference.